Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you the easiest way that I'm aware of to install Android Go on any computer. This is great for those that have older computers with less RAM, less space and you have tried several methods, some of them that I did share right over here, how to install Android, how to run Android off a USB pen drive, I will leave some links down below. But if any of those didn't work because your machine is a bit older, this method will use Android Go, which as you know, it's a light version of Android. So that being said, I will share with you a step-by-step -step guide and I will do everything here with you so that you can give a second life to your computer. Let's go for it. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. And besides Windows 11 Pro, if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account, you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below so here we are on my desktop and i've got the android go web page which we will not need if you already are aware of android go then great if not just browse around and you can see that it will use a lot less resources you can use on tablets and phones and we will be using here on our computer. Now, for that, we will need Bliss OS, which I will share with you how to do it. And we will also need Rufus, which is a tool that we have used here a lot, so no introductions necessary. For that, let's go and search for Bliss OS on uh, your browser. And we just need to go to Bliss OS official website. And then you can browse around and see some of the details. And if you want to go directly to the download, so what you need to go is just scroll down, you will have several Bliss OS versions. The Bliss OS 16 is Android 13. Bliss OS Zenith, this is the bleeding edge, so everything is experimental. So if you are with a adventure spirit, <laughs> this is the version that you want. There's also Bliss OS 14, which is the stable version, and 15, which is also stable version, Android 11 and Android 12. And then you have depreciated versions, which we don't need at this moment, at least. Actually, if any of these versions do not work with your computer, and your computer is really really old probably it's not a, a bad idea to try out the depreciated versions you can find uh, you can search and find for them now let's go to the downloads and for the downloads we will have the bliss os 14 which we have seen 15 16 and bliss os uh, zenith now if i go to 15 which was the version that i did download for my computer we will have here the bliss os builds based on Android 12 and these builds are stable and can be used as a daily driver. Now if your computer is punchy you might use this version right over here on the top or any of other versions that I've shared here in the past. I will leave some links down below so that you can check them out. But if your computer is older then you will want the Android Go version which is this one here at the bottom. There are two. This one has Google Play Store and all the Google services and this one doesn't. So I will select this one right here but it's up to you i just need to go right over here to the download on the source forge and just click it will open a new window and there we go now we just need to select right over here the iso version and this one is two gigabytes so let me press right over here it will take about five seconds or so now in my experience i've done quite a few downloads on my tests and there are hours of the day which is really really slow usually at night uh, which is already at night again <laughs> and uh, sometimes faster and one of the things that i did notice is when it starts it will start always really slow and then it will speed up so i would say that at least 10 minutes you will take to do this download right over here. Now, while it downloads, where we can go to the Rufus, you just need to search on your browser, Rufus, probably you already have it right over there installed, and then just download, and we can have the regular version to install or the portable version, which is the one that I'm using right now. Now, I don't need to wait for the download, which at this moment is really, really slow because I already have it here on my desktop, Rufus Portable version and Bliss OS. So we just need to 
insert our pen drive which I already inserted as well and then run Rufus. You will see a blank screen right now which is the administration authorization. Once I do that I just need to select yes to the updates online. We have talked about this at, in the past because it will limit us in some options. None of them I will be using in this particular video but nonetheless automatic updates are just great. Now we just need to select our USB pen drive which at this moment I'm using a 32 gigs you just need 8 gigs minimum USB pen drive and then I will select my image file. Now mine is here on the desktop so I just need to select and press open and there we go. And on partition shim you just need to know which is your shim uh, um, MBR or GPT. In this particular case Biosh or UFI. In my particular case, it's UFI. If you're not, you are not sure, you can come here and on the search, you can search for system information and it will give you the BIOS mode, so UEFI. I'm almost sure that if we use MBR, it will work for both BIOS or UFI, but in my particular case, I'm gonna put it GPT and that was it. Now, in terms of the volume name, I can call it whatever I want. I can leave it as it is, but I'm going to delete this X86 and there we go. I'm gonna leave everything as it is. I'm gonna press start, write an ISO image mode, which is the recommended one, and press OK. Just make sure that we want to delete the right USB pen drive. Press OK, and that is it. This will take roughly two minutes and 20 seconds, more or less. Actually, it was faster this time, one minute and 46 seconds. But this is it, we have the pen drive ready so that we can install. And right now, let's go for the install, which is probably the same time as the USB pen creation. So let's go for it. So at this moment, we have the USB pen drive ready and we need to restart our computer. So I'm just going to select restart. And depending on the computer that we have, I want to restart now on the BIOS. And for that, usually it is delete, which is my case, or it can be F12, F2. So just check the computer that you have so that you can access your BIOS. Now, once we are on a BIOS, usually you have an option, which is boot override. We can find it here on save and exit, and we can select the boot override, which at this moment I've got my Windows, I've got the UFI USB pen drive, which is the one that we just created. And in your particular case, you will be seeing only these two. Here I have a third one because I did install Bliss OS for a few times and I just recorded my Portuguese video so it detects that I do have an installation of Bliss OS. But I want to boot from the USB because we are going to do a fresh installation of Android Go through Bliss OS. So I'm going to press enter on the USB pen drive and we are going to wait just for a few moments and there we go. We will enter this screen right over here. Now before you install, if you want to check out if your computer is compatible, which it should be, we just need to select this option which is the live option and we will be able to try out Android Go on our computer over the USB pen drive without installing anything. So this is a great option. Now, if you are sure that you want to install, just go to the installation option right over here, press enter, and then we will start the installation procedure, which is really fast and easy as we will have the chance to see. Now, this is all normal. We will get to this menu. If we don't press anything, it will just disappear. These are just messages so that we can read. And this is where we need our intervention. Now, here you can see that I've got two SSDs. And you can see right over here, one SSD with two partitions with 240 gigs and one SSD with four partitions, which is my Windows uh, installation with one terabyte. So it's really easy to detect. If you only have one SSD, it's even easier. And in this particular case, we will need to select two things. The first menu is asking where do I want to put the EFI system partition. Now I already have one, but if you only see one SSD right over here, just select that one. Now I'm going to select the smaller size uh, partition, so I'm going to press enter. We can uh, leave it as it is, but let's format everything clean up. So yes, I'm, 
I can change the name, but I will leave it like that. Press OK and then press Yes and bam, we have our EFI. Now it's asking where do I want to install. So I want to install on the exact same disk, which is the 240 gigs, but on the larger partition. So I'm just going to select that one, I'm going to press Enter and we can leave it as is, but let's clean it up and I will select the X4. So press it i can rename if i want to but i'm going to leave it as it is press ok and then yes i want and there we go it will start formatting and then we can move on to the installation so once it finishes formatting it will go through that uh, line of code that you have seen and then uh, do we want to prepare it for auto we can but i'm going to select no and right over here it detects windows so which bootloader do i want to use i can use the first one but or the second depends on what we want to use but uh, any will be just fine you probably will not get this menu right over here because you are installing for the first time but as i already had an installation it's detecting one do i want to delete yes we are going to delete because we want everything fresh it also detected windows and it's saying that probably it will not be able to put it on the bootloader which is okay so i'm going to press okay and right now it's going to install and it will take about one minute or so and there we go just finished installed and the option that we have is run or reboot now we are going to press run but the computer is going to reboot anyway <laughs> so the two options are basically the same and right now i didn't remove my usb pen drive i will not go into the bio settings but as we will be able to see, it will boot from the internal SSD. So right now, if I don't press anything, it will boot on the first option, which is the installation that we just finished. We could see a blue thing right over here indicate if you go back on the video, we'll be able to check out. And we have this boot menu right over here, which we can select to do any changes. But if I don't press anything, it will just boot normally and it will go inside the operating system as we will be able to check out it will take only a few seconds the first boot will take a bit longer because it's preparing everything but second boot third boot and so on will be much faster and there we go just got in the initial screen so we can just start using and you can install everything that you want now let's select just quick step right over here and press always uh, if i press up it will show me the draw with all the apps let's go just to the settings so that i can show you that at this moment we are using the internal ssd that we did install right over here on the storage we can see that there's nine percent used of 218 gigabytes free so we are indeed using the internal ssd storage which is fast as well so really really snappy and you can have a uh, great fun now if i go right over here it will detect the usb pen drive but it will not detect my windows ssd which is great so even if i want accidentally i wouldn't be able to uh, erase my windows installation and basically this is it we are now ready to start using android go on bliss os and basically this is it now you have android go on your computer and you can install the apps youtube and watch videos such as this one right over here netflix and any game that you want depending on the ssd that you are using if it's larger you will have obviously more space for apps and if it's smaller less space for apps but nonetheless this is a great experience that i've had so far i did test out some games i did test out a few apps all of them worked great and of course this computer that i've got right over here it's able to handle other versions of android heavier versions and windows and whatever i want to throw at it because it's a i7 it's a machine that is not that old but if you have an older machine then this might be a great solution to run android and do a lot besides entertainment apps we can also install word excel powerpoint and use it for work for a children to do homeworks and whatnot that being said hope that this video was helpful in some way and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you on the next one